Welcome. Welcome to Kojo's Man. Today we're talking about simple interests. And it's a formula. And it's one of the things that we use whenever we want to figure out how much we owe if we want to borrow money, if we want to buy something, and we have to pay them back. They're not just going to let us borrow money to buy a car without charging us a rate or a fee to borrow that money. And that's called interest. Or if we're going to save money, we have to put it, a lot of times we put open a savings account in a bank, and they pay us interest to give them our money. And then they use that money to invest and buy other things. That's how they, they um, provide mortgages and stuff like that for people who want to buy homes. The money comes from the people who put their money into the bank to save their money. And then they pay them an interest to put their money in the bank. That's called simple interest. There's a formula that you have to know. It's called I equals PRT, where I is the interest, and you need to know this. P is the principal, P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L. The principal is the amount of money that we're either putting into the bank to save or the amount of money that we want to borrow to buy something. So the principal is always associated with money. The rate is always the interest rate. That's always the percent. How much they're going to charge us to borrow the money or how much they're going to give us to put our money in their bank or their institution to save. That's the rate. And then the time is how long are you going to have to borrow the money? They're not just going to let you borrow it forever. If you borrow $5,000, they want to know when you're going to pay it back. There's going to be an ending time to it. It's usually associated with years, like two years or four years. So time is years, but sometimes it's associated with months. Months. If it's associated with months, it's always written the month over the 12. Okay? So, this is simple interest. I equals PRT. You have to write that formula on every time for each problem. And as I was saying, time, if it's less than a year, you write it as a fraction over 12. And I'll show you how to do that in a second in the formula. So, if it's one month, it would be 1 over 12. If it's three months, it would be three over 12, which simplifies to one fourth. If it's years, if it's just years, then all you do is you write down three for time. You don't put it in a fraction. If, though, they give you something that's like a year and a half, which is how long? How many months is a year and a half? Yes, 18 months. If they give it to you as 18 months, or 20 months, you always write it over one year. Always over 12. You don't write it over 24 because it's always simple interest is based on one year. So you don't write it over anything, any other number if it's if it's years with months, like 18 months, you write it 18 over 12. And you can simplify that. Now there's two key words here. There's a deposit. Whenever they tell you you're going to deposit the money, that means you're saving money. You're putting it into the bank. You want it to earn interest, so you make money. Borrow is when you owe money. You borrow the principal amount of money that you're going to have to pay back, and they're going to charge you a fee, and the fee is the interest. Okay? Both I got it. Now, we're going to do this one. For instance, find interest earned. This All this wants to know is the interest earned. So this is what we're talking about. If it says earned, that means it's a deposit and you're saving money. Okay? So we have the, the principal. This is usually how you'll see it or you organize it. The principal is $500. The rate is 5%. And you're putting it in there for three months. That means you can't touch it for three months. And they're going to give you 5% interest every month. The first thing you have to do is you have to write the formula. I equals PRT. The second thing is you write I equals, now you put the principal is 500 times the rate. We always change the rate from the percent to a decimal. So if it's 5%, we have to put it in our formula as 0 0.05. Don't forget that. You have to change the percent to a decimal in the formula. And then three months. And what did I say about three months? Yes, it has to be written as a fraction. 
3 months is 3 over 12, which is 1 4. Now here's the cool thing. We bring down our work. You get to use a calculator, but you have to show your formula. You have to show your work. And you enter it exactly how it's put. You put 500 into the calculator times 0 0.05 times 1, you go to the fraction, divided by, you hit the division sign, 4. Because that is a division. So you go 500 times 0 0.05 times 1 divided by 4. And that's going to give you the interest which is $6.25. So at the end of three months, I would not only have my $500 in the bank, or the institution that I've in invested in, but I'd have an additional $6.25. Doesn't sound like much. That's why people shop around for their best investment. The stock market, you can say, well, I can put my money in there and make more money, but there's a greater risk. If I put it in there and just let it sit, it's going to make $6.25 at the end of three months. So how much money do I have in the bank at the end of three months? Do I have only $6.25? No. I have $506.25. Don't forget that. Because I'll ask you for the interest and the total amount that you either have saved or how much do you owe now. You always have to pay back the, the principal. So here we go. Here we borrowed $5,000. We have an interest of 9%. And we've done it for 18 months. So the first thing is, is what is the interest that I owe? Because I have to pay it back. And how much money do I have to pay back by the end? So the first thing I do is I write my formula. I equals PRT. Then I write I equals the principal is $5,000. I put a dot and not an X, so it's less confusing. The interest is 9%. What do I have to change the 9% to? Yes, a decimal. 0 0.09. I'm not going to put 0 0.09. It's just extra stuff that's there. I don't need it when I'm doing my work, only in final answers, for 18 months. Now, what did I tell you about 18 months? I write it over 12. Now, I can simplify it, or I can leave it like that, because the calculator is going to do the work for me. Do you remember how to do it? I enter 5,000 times... 0 0.09 times the numerator, the months, 18. But then what do I do? What does that mean? Divide by 12. And I get $675. So my interest is $675. So that's the interest. But how much do I have to pay back? I have to pay back $675. So I say $675 plus, what did I borrow? $5,000. I have to pay it all back. So my total answer, I have to pay back, is $5,675. There's always two answers on these most of the time. They want to know the interest, and they want to know how much do you have to pay back total, or how much do you have you saved. So now I want you to pause the video. And I want you to try to find the interest owed and the total saved or the total owed. So stop the pause the video, and when you're done, come back and you'll check your answers. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. This should be 6 over 12, 1 half. And did you get stuck with the 2, the 2 years? You just enter a 2. You don't put it over months because it's whole, a whole number. Here, did you put 0.155 instead of 0.15 because it's 15 and a half percent? Let's see how you did. You can pause the video and check it. You should have had on the first one $69.75 is the interest. A total amount that's in the bank is $969.75. On this one, you borrow, remember, two years. You just put in a two, you don't have a fraction. You, the interest was $480 that you have to pay back, and you owe a $2,480 now. That's it. I need you to write down something that you learned, two things that you learned, and I need you to write down one question. And I will see you in class. Take it easy. Bye-bye.